What's good, Bugtoop? It's Monty, and today I am back again, once again, with another video. And today I am going to be doing a weekly reading vlog. We're going to start off with a weekly reading vlog. It has been a hot second since I have done one. Um, feels appropriate. So today is a Monday. Hopefully this will be up by next Monday. Um, I originally thought that we were going to do like a series of smaller vlogs, but then it took me a lot longer to read <laughs> these violent delights or no, our violent ends. It's gonna be a lot longer to finish that for my Patreon book club situation. I'm going to show you the three books <laughs> that I plan to read this week. If I get some more, that would be great, but these are kind of my priorities. They all have the similar theme that I think is going to help me get through them. The first up is The Marvelous by Claire Kahn. This is the Choices Book Club book for the month of December pick. This is, we have like four people who get brought together to play this little game to win an inheritance type situation, to win some money. Looking forward to that. How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao. This is a Asian dark academic story. So maybe there's going to be murder. Maybe there's not going to be murder. Not entirely sure, but I want to read this. And then the last book is the adult pick for this week and that is Stacey Abrams's While Justice Sleeps. I believe this deals with the incapacitation slash murder of a Supreme Court justice and their clerk is involved in the investigation um, slash like maybe they also were given an inheritance or something. They're trying to get to the bottom of what like actually happened to the Supreme Court justice. I'll check in once I've started to do some reading. My plan for today isn't really to do much reading. Um, I don't think it's going to happen because I've been reading Our Violent Ends all morning. And I kind of just want to take a break from from reading and, and just relax for a little bit. But we'll see. If I check in later today, then I will. And if it's not until tomorrow, then it'll be tomorrow. What is up? So I have read, oh, where am I? Like 22, 23, 24, something like that percent of while justice sleeps it's been a lot obviously of expositions we've met our main character avery we've met justice win we've had a uh, death so it's a little exciting you know it's a little bit spicy spicy i'm currently on my way to half priced books because that's where i'm going to go on haul all those things that you guys saw on my tuesday video where i said i'm unhauling things i did wind up leaving uh what if it's us at home not currently in the vehicle with me just because maybe maybe I don't know I'm, I don't know I don't know so it's at home currently but let's get back to while justice sleep so we started off the book with the court justice Mr. Wynn Justice Wynn who is I don't know how old he's supposed to be but he's a little bit old you know a little bit tiny bit doing his thing um we know that he has a neurological situation and he is arguing well, he's arguing he's having a discussion with his little home health nurse uh jamie lewis they're discussing things and he overdoses on some pills he says fuck this i'm gonna overdose on the pills um and we then find out that his home health nurse miss lewis nurse lewis has been hired by the government the government is in on it because they want this man taken out. They want this man dead for some reason. And so she was supposed to call somebody. She was supposed to call, you know, her little government friend. But she decides that she's going to do the right thing and call the U.S. Marshals. So she calls the Marshal Service and she says, hey, just so y'all know, this man is unconscious. He has died. Like, he is on the verge of death. Y'all need to get him an ambulance. I guess that's the protocol. You gotta call the marshals first. You can't just be calling the ambulance willy-nilly. Anyway, so she calls the marshals. The marshals show up. But then, we find out Justice Wynn is not dead. He is very much just on the verge of death. Because he regains consciousness. And he's like, I need you to do this for me. You need to call this person and say this thing. And even though Nurse Lubus took this job knowing that her only job was to make sure this man died and she didn't have to kill him, really. I mean, I think at some point she was gonna have to kill him, but he was committing suicide. So she could have just let the man be. 
and she wouldn't have to kill nobody. So she, you know, she called the service, she called the person, or she attempted to call the person. That's where our main character, Avery, comes in. So we find out that our main character, Avery, who is one of the clerks, there's, I think he has two clerks, she's one of them, and her mother is a mess. She a hot mess express. She low-key an addict. She was calling her up trying to get some money. She's been in and out of rehab. So our girl, Miss, Miss, Miss Avery, was otherwise preoccupied during this call that she's supposed to get. So now where I'm at in the story, it is the next day and Avery has found out that she has power of attorney for this justice who is in a coma. Now, this is where the entire plot of the book hinges because apparently you can't just remove a Supreme Court justice. Um, a Supreme Court justice can resign, but he's in a coma. And apparently there are some legal questions as to um, can the person with the power of attorney resign in place of the person who has, you know, is in, who was, you know, incapacitated to this degree. It's interesting. It's a very interesting legal question. And as someone who wanted, you know, a legal, political, thriller, mystery book, I'm eating it up. It's very much giving uh, John Grisham. It's very much giving John Grisham. So if you are a John Grisham girly, I think While Justice Sleeps is for you. I've only read one John Grisham book and I read it in high school, but it was a good little book for high school Monty. And this is very much giving um, John Grisham and I love it. I am, I'm eating it up. I don't know if Stacey Abrams is going to give us another one. But I, so far, I have no complaints. So that's where I'm at right now. What is up? I'm back. We're going to update. Maybe there's a fire going on on the other side of this freeway. I don't know. But I'm going to update you guys. So I am at 67% of While Justice Sleeps. And I wanted to come in and update even though editing the audio for this is going to be annoying because shit is hitting the fan in this book. And I'm kind of annoyed, kind of annoyed. So, we have our homegirl Avery who is teaming up trying to undercover the tangled mess of shit that she finds herself in the middle of. It's still, it's really interesting. I do think that Stacey Abrams is doing a really good job of giving us a lot of like clues and things and nice little moments where the tension can raise up and we can be like, oh, what's happening? What's happening? But not so many to where it's like, okay, let's calm it down, let's calm it down. Like, it's nicely balanced, I think. It's nicely written, specifically if you are looking for something that is political in nature, that does revolve around, like, legalities of things. I think that if you enjoyed Falling by T.J. Newman that I read earlier this year. You are also enjoying While Justice Sleeps because while they're not the same, I think that they both do similar things well. Maybe, if that makes sense. But the part that is, like, killing me about this, the part that is ruining my soul and my spirit is... I feel like While Justice Sleeps has the most interactions between law enforcement and our protagonist because in these like little mystery thrillers there's always is this sense of the protagonist has to go out and do the law, they have to take law into their own hands, do the investigation themselves, that kind of a thing. But here, because it was the Supreme Court justice, you know, there is clearly some high level fuckery going on. Like, the Department of Homeland Security is involved. It's very shady. The FBI is involved. Very shady. Like, there are these actual, like, agencies that you can't just, like, brush under the rug like you can when you sell your book in Podunk, Idaho and you got two cops from Podunk, Idaho. You know what I mean? But the part that is killing me is we keep having these discussions of, like, are you arresting me? Am I being arrested? because the FBI or the Homeland Security person comes in and it's like, I mean, you don't actually have to be arrested or detained to enter into a custodial environment. 
you don't. But also, I find that this is, we are only 67% of the way in. So at this point, we're starting to get answers, but there are still a lot of questions out there. And I am very nervous about how this is going to wrap up. I'm having a wonderful time. I still think that if you like John Grisham, you're gonna like this. I think if you like well laid out mysteries that don't do too much, that aren't trying to subvert expectations, you will like this, but I am not done. I am not done and oftentimes it's the ending of these kinds of stories that is the worst part, that is the part of the book that is not done justice. So it's, I'm a little nervous, but it is what it is. I'm going to go back to listening because I think I can finish this today which would be great, which will be two books in the past two days. So love that for me. But um, I'm going to go, I'll check back in once I have actually finished to give you guys my final thoughts. What is up? So I finished While Justice Sleeps. Also, I don't know if I actually like how this is framed anymore because I decided last night that I was going to move my room around and put the shelves in a different location because I, I don't know. It was the middle of the night. It felt like a good idea at the time. I don't really know if I like having my bedroom door in the frame. Not really sure that works, but we're just going to go with it for right now. So I finished While Justice Sleeps yesterday around, I don't know, like six o'clock. Was it six o'clock? Couldn't have been six o'clock. I feel like I finished it when I got back from running to Half Price Books. So maybe around like five or so, like four or five. Finished it. I gave it four out of five stars. <sighs> I enjoyed, I think I talked about this, but there was like a Dan Brown quality to the book that like was fine because it was introduced early on. Like there's a, the plot of the book, like the, the sort of the mystery that we're sort of unraveling has to do with like a merger situation and the merger being blocked by this, uh, the president of the United States in the book. And, um, the companies were like a bio and genetic company situation so there was a lot of that. There was a, a plot point of just like ethnic cleansing or Islamophobia um, as sort of like the catalyst for our antagonistic forces um, at the center of the mystery. So if that's going to be something that you don't want to read about, I would skip while Justice Sleeps. Overall, I feel like Stacey Abrams executed a story that made sense, that was enjoyable to read that I had a good time with but at the same time it's hard for me to be like yeah everyone should read this because of the Islamophobia and the sort of like the day like I feel like there are very truly a slim few um thriller mystery type plots that are original but here it was just sort of like I don't know but b because of how it was executed it, the originality wasn't as important to me and I was okay with it feeling a little bit derivative okay with it feeling like I had read something like this before already so that was that I still have to read but I have the marvelous and how we fall apart still to read for this week I kind of want to go with how we fall apart I was hoping that one of these like audiobooks would be available but if you saw my tweets, then you all know I don't need to spend any more money on books. So I'm going to go. I, let's see here. It is, what time is it? It is 8.57. That's the lock screen. Why are we doing that to me, Apple Watch? I'm trying. <laughs> it is 8.57. Now it's 8.58. So I need to eat some breakfast. Um, one of these will probably get done, like I said, probably how we fall apart is what I'm leaning towards, but who knows. So, today is now Wednesday. I just watched Hawkeye. I don't know if you guys are watching that show, but I was watching it. Um, now that all the episodes are out, I think you guys are going to have a better experience than I do, because I don't really think that the Marvel shows are good week to week. I think that they are good altogether, and yet I still... I can't, I also can't bring myself to go back and watch the ones that I skipped. So like Falcon, never going to see it past episode like three and Loki don't care. I will say that I was annoyed with Hawkeye in that like, <laughs> it was fine week to week. You know, Haley Steinfeld carried the show on her back. Florence Pugh carried the show on her back. But at the same time, I was kind of like, 
it kind of bothered me that um, we didn't see it play into the larger MCU only because the MCU likes to brag that it's like one big story and like you can't skip things. But um, you could totally just skip over. You could totally skip over Hawkeye. And I didn't expect it to be like totally linked to anything that was just happening and, you know, No Way Home or anything. But um, you would think that if they're both set in New York and the multiverse just ripped open in the sky above New York City and there was a battle on the Statue of Liberty, like maybe, like maybe there would be something, but there was nothing. So I'm going to go. So basically I lost all of the, I don't know why this clip doesn't have sound. I don't know what I was doing incorrectly, but I was doing something wrong. So basically this was me telling you all that I had watched Aaron on her live sprints that she did with Mina and Kayla. I believe. And uh, I was reading How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao. I was telling you that I was giving this book one out of five stars because I thought the book was absolute garbage. I didn't think that it was very good at all. It was supposed to be the story of this elite private school. We had this group of four friends. Uh, one of the friends, uh, the sort of it girl, center girl that kind of brought them all together, had died. And the four friends had, there was already like this little gossip forum app, basically, at the school. This thing was called like TipTap. And the TipTap person had come out against them and was saying that they were the reason that homegirl had died. And they were going to release the secrets if they didn't, you know, come out and tell the world what they had done wrong. And I kind of felt that I was back in 2009 in the worst possible way. I will say that I don't think this book was quite like, um, what was that book called by fucking that one book? One of us is lying. I saw in some reviews, people said that this is basically one of us is lying. I don't really agree with that. I do think that it leans more towards being a pretty little liar situation, only just as bad. Like it's not updated for 2021 outside of like the tip tap app. And I kind of wanted it. If you're going to retell it, I kind of wanted um, something more and I feel like there were definitely other books that kind of deal with the Asian American experience in a way that this book t tried to do and attempted to do and like it does center you know for Asian Americans but th some of the secrets that were revealed were just completely ridiculous to the point that I couldn't believe them I also felt that the book went by extremely too fast I think the book is under 300 pages and I don't think that in the 300 pages that we got, we were able to connect with the characters to a degree that having their secrets revealed meant much of anything to me. And so I was kind of laughing at the secrets that were revealed because I also didn't think that they were as earth ending as they were supposed to be. Maybe I think that part of what made gossip, I'm not Gossip Girl, but uh, Pretty Little Liars so interesting is that those were for regular people. Um, sure, Spencer seemed to be a little bit well off in terms of like the TV show and even Hannah to a degree, but these were just like four regular people. So like their secrets getting out um, would have made sense, but these are supposed to be like the wealthy, the elite, you know, the creme de la creme. I mean, sure, Alex here and I think the other um, Nancy were just like more, they were the scholarship kids. So like their secrets getting out, I, I could understand, but the other two um, were the wealthy, the elite. And I thought that they had some of the worst secrets in the book. So it didn't work for me. I don't think it really would work for anybody. If you want something that's, you know, feels like it's ripped out of 2009, go for it. This might be up your alley. But for me, it didn't work. And I don't really recommend any of you guys pick it up. So I'm going to go ahead and end this clip here. I'm sorry if this was jarring to watch because I know that what I'm saying now is not lining up with what that Monty is saying. But I didn't want to, I, I realized this is the only clip that I had where I talked about how we fall apart. And so this seemed like the best solution without me turning on my camera again. Okay. I don't know what's happening here anymore, but um, <laughs> I wish that I could blame it on the fact that I just woke up, but that's not entirely true because I've been up for about an hour. Last night, I did start The Marvelous. I did one sprint with some friends and then they all went to go watch the witcher and i said well i'm not gonna be doing any more reading 
So I read the first 58 pages. Essentially, we've had all three of our main characters. Um, Nicole, Luna, and I want to say the other person's name begins with an S. They have arrived at the house of Jules Van Hannen, who is the creator of this fake social media platform that all three of these girls are using um, to sort of like play a game, do a thing. It's giving very much like spooky ooky vibes. This is giving what I think You're So Dead was trying to give with like this little gothic -y horror vibe to like the situation at this house. Um, I don't really want to get into everything in this book too much because it is the choices book for the month and so I don't want to do like this reading vlog for this book and then do like another 30 minute hour discussion but <clears throat> I am enjoying it so far I'm looking forward to doing some more reading today this might be the last thing I read for this vlog because there are a couple of things that I want to get to but I don't know if I want to put them in this reading vlog or if I'm going to try and combine them with other books. Um, I haven't decided. Mostly, I think I because part of me really wants to read Portrait of a Thief by Grace Lee. Because so far this vlog has been a lot of like mystery thriller type things by authors of color. And I feel like Portrait of a Thief fits in. But it's also kind of a bit away from when that book comes out. So I'm going to go. I'm going to eat some breakfast i'll check in once i've done some more reading okay so hello i am back again let's talk about the marvelous i am on page 106 out of like 300 and something i want to say um i did not finish this yesterday 382 pages um didn't finish it yesterday i did one sprint and then the zoom got dismantled so i mean i can't really blame the zoom the zoom definitely got dismantled but i could have thrown on some reading sprints of my own, done something. But here's the thing. I'm enjoying the book a little bit. There's definitely like an eerie quality that I want to say, what was that book I read? Uh, You're So Dead. I read from my October Choose Your Adventure vlog. So if you go through the little pathy path, you'll find that video. And I think it was supposed to have like this little spooky, yuki, gothic -y kind of vibe as they were on this little fire festival ripoff island or whatever. But, like, the spooky yuki vibes never really gelled. I do think the spooky yukis are definitely here for the Marvelous. It's not... I mean, after I actually sat down and read the synopsis, I knew that it wasn't quite what I like reading for the Choices Book Club, but I figured that it would still work. I'm not sure that it really... It's definitely the most different book that we've read. It's definitely not the most focused on the, you know, elite and rich and wealthy people doing elite, rich, messy people things. Although we also did read Firekeeper's Daughter, which wasn't that either. So like maybe it's not the most different, but it's, it's definitely a different vibe. And I kind of like it. I do like our main, she's not the main character, but she's kind of like the driving force behind all of this. Jewel Van Hannon, who was the creator of the little app and the host of this little weekend. I still just don't really know what the point of the weekend is. And I think that's where I, I don't know what the point is. And I don't know that I care to find out what the point is. And if I don't like those two things, then I'm probably not going to enjoy the rest of this book. So it has that going for, but it also has that going against it. And I, it's a push and a pull. It's a push and a pull. So I'm going to hopefully finish this today so I can get this up for my patrons on tomorrow. Well, early, well, really later today, but it's already, what time is it? It's already 1035. So I'd have to do some real reading reading. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish watching the booktube video that I'm currently watching. I'm going to put on some reading sprints. I thought I tossed around the idea of hosting some reading sprints, but I honestly just don't have the bandwidth to do that. So I'm going to finish the booktube video. Then I'm going to finish reading this, come back, close out the vlog, get this up for the patrons so I can have this out for you guys on Christmas. I done fucked up and I didn't grab the Marvelous. So I'm not going to be holding it up for this last clip, but um, I finished it. I'm giving it three out of five stars. If you're watching this and you have already seen my Goodreads review, if you follow me over there, the link is always down below in the description. But um, I just... I had a really good time reading this. It kind of gave me the same vibes as when I was reading the uh, the Westing Games. The Westing Games? Is that right? Westing Games? 
by Ellen Raskin. It's like a middle grade, like, I wouldn't call it a murder mystery, but it's like a cozy mystery type thing where this wealthy man who lives on the hill, like, dies. And I think he owned, like, an apartment complex. And so, like, the people who lived in that apartment complex get invited to the reading of the will. And, like, there's, like, a little game and stuff. Fun times. One of my favorite books that I read in my childhood. And I think that The Marvelous is kind of, like, an updated modern version of that. And so it was a good time. So for the children out there who want to read, like, a fun mystery type thing, I think that this is definitely a good book. For me, though... Um, and I don't want to get too much into this because we are, one, I already have already vlogged about it a little bit, but we are going to have like a whole book show discussion about it. I'm thinking on the 27th, 28th, I don't know. I need to schedule that. But um, that aside, <laughs> the, the book was just, like I said, it was okay. I think that because it took place over the course of a weekend, it was like a three day situation. There wasn't a lot in terms of me connecting to these characters because I also wasn't when I read like thriller mystery type things I'm not playing a game of whodunit I don't put on my detective hat and I don't look for clues and like search for the winner and so much of the story was involved in you trying to like figure out what this fucking riddle was and like these other things that were happening and it just was it was a little bit too much for me it's not something that I particularly enjoy in a novel and so when I was like I don't want to say I was skipping over the things but like I wasn't engaged in trying to figure out what the clues were leading to what the the game was actually about and so it just kind of because it's such like an important part of the story I just didn't care and I didn't I wasn't invested in it in a way that I think that you kind of have to be for the book to truly shine so that was all on me not really on the book but I did have a good time I thought our three lead characters Luna, Stella, and Nicole were fine I thought that the other characters that were invited to the Golden Weekend were also fine. But again, this does take place over the course of three days. And while I'm happy that this, like, this definitely was better than Rise to the Sun, which is also set over three days, I think that Claire Kahn did not try to delve into the, I mean, there were definitely melodramatic moments that were <laughs> involved in the playing of these games that were just kind of like a little bit ridiculous. But at the same time, I didn't feel that it was too much things that were going wrong in a short time span this way that I did when I was reading Rise to the Sun where there was like a love declaration and a terrorist attack and revenge porn. There was so much going on in Rise of the Sun. So here I felt that there was a lot going on, but it all played into the story that felt organic and necessary. So those are the, those are my final thoughts for The Marvelous. For this vlog, I read While Justice Slept by Stacey Abrams, which I gave four out of five stars, I think. I don't think I gave that a full five stars. Uh, then we read... That god-awful book, How We Fell Apart by Katie Zhao, which was, again, god-awful, gave that one out of five stars. And The Marvelous, which I gave three out of five stars. So I'm going to say that my past couple of reading days, I started that reading vlog on Tuesday. I want to say, I don't think I started it on Monday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I read three books. Three books in three days, essentially. Love that for me. Love that for you guys. Hopefully that you've had a decent reading week this week. If you've made it to the end of the video, you can go ahead and drop whatever emoji that I decide and settle on down below. I will see you guys again soon with some more videos, but until then and until next time.